Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, this is the COSI virtual interim meeting. Um, this is an official ITF meeting and as such the not well applies. I believe everyone here is familiar with it, but if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask uh, me or uh, Mike Jones about it. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, I think there might be some slight changes uh, from discussions with the authors of uh, different items. I don't know, uh, Jürgen, are you going to uh, need to discuss anything about IAN registration policies now? Um, I don't know. I don't have any more input besides what we discussed okay. at the ITF 110. Okay. And no I more guess. progress on the FIDO registration, sir. So we responded to that based on the um, on on the discussion at the last working group meeting, mm. and I have not. So. I mean, I've not seen any confirmation of that. So I, I assume it's re reached the the requesting party. Okay. Uh, yes, and then maybe during the draft updates, we will spend a little bit more time on the X509 uh, draft. So with that, I guess we can move on. So here are the minutes. Uh, the meeting and the minutes are recorded. Uh, please put your name in the minutes in order for us to be able to track the attendance. I will also share the, this link in the chat. Uh, And uh, yes, is there any volunteers to help with the action items uh, recording in the minutes? Otherwise, maybe uh, Mike uh, Jones can do that, and uh, of course, everyone uh, could help, and that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I don't expect there to be much uh, communication on Jabber, but uh, we will be also trying to monitor that. If you see anything that we have missed, uh, please let us know. Okay, I can pick. And with I don't, that, I don't, yeah. I don't see the minutes link in the meeting invitation. So I don't know where it is. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I will share oh, there it. it. Is. I shared it in the chat in okay. uh, WebEx. Yeah. I will send it to you as well. I have it with you. Okay, now you should have it. Uh, so, the rechartering uh, has completed. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, your participation. Uh, we, with that, we have our new charter and now we uh, can 
formally adopt the uh, CBOR certificates uh, draft. And uh, given that there has been no objection to this and some support in the mailing list, I think uh, we can just go ahead and uh, post this on the mailing list. Of course, if anyone has any objections to this, uh, please let uh, the chairs know. Otherwise, I don't believe there is uh, much change in the status of uh, the hash outs and uh, uh, these documents. Um, Eva, which document or documents are we prepared to adopt? Uh, we are going to adopt uh, the, this document draft, Maths and Cozy CBOR Certificate Compress. And I guess we will rename it at that time as was discussed. Uh, should we, so should we already now update, upload this as draft ITF Cozy or should we wait for some uh, that you mail something out to the mailing list or? Um... I believe I would first um, email this to the mailing list and uh, then uh, you can send it and within a few days, I guess, I will, we will approve it. Uh, should there be no objections, otherwise we will discuss, of course. Yeah, uh, maybe we wait until you, the chairs gives, uh, best if the chairs um, mail the authors when you think we should upload the adopted okay. person. Yeah. Yes, that sounds good. So, uh, I believe uh, um, Michael Richardson, uh, maybe you can tell us if there are any uh, updates for the COSI countersign document. So I, I, I finished the Shepherd report. I posted those questions to the mailing list about updates, about what it should formally update. And we had the conversation, uh, and I guess uh, I was expecting uh, Russell Housley would add to the updates list, but um, regardless, I think there's con I think there's mostly consensus that it should update both the new document, the the fifty eighty one fifty two bis struct, and eighty RFC eighty one fifty two. Okay. Okay, I will um, reach out to Russ to make sure this happens. Yes, I remember uh, that this was the consensus. Okay. Uh, and uh, then for the X509 document, I saw that uh, uh, there are three pull requests in GitHub. Uh, it appears that there are still one or two items that have not been uh, answered to, I believe uh, Ben Kaduk had commented uh, on the merge request from John. Uh, otherwise, uh, they looked good to me and I didn't see any other uh, objections. So please take a look at them and uh, otherwise, um, our intention is to merge those uh, 
pull requests and then continue from there. John, do you want to add anything about this? Um, no, I, I, after the last meeting, I tried to update my, my pull request based on all the um, discussion and agreement during the meeting. Then I saw after I did that, there was some comment from Lawrence and Michael Richardson, but after that, I went on vacation for a couple of weeks. So I have not really been following the discussion, but I saw that Ben also got involved, but, um. Okay, so uh, then do you want uh, me or someone else to uh, take a look at the new comments or do you intend to reply to them? Uh, yeah, I, I can also, I, I will take a look at the comments. But I, I guess someone else is owning the document and needs to take the final decisions. Okay, yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, and wait. Oh, sorry. Uh, what about the open issues? Are those addressed um, by, by the PR? So there are eight open issues and at least, I mean, I see five of those is since December. And I, I, I don't think all the pull requests cover all the open issues. Have we, have we really gone through those? And uh, I did not check that. I know it covers some of the issues, but uh, yes, that is a good point. I'm not sure if that covers all of them. So as the current editor of the draft, I will uh, take a look at that and come back to you before the next uh, interim meeting. Um, because yes, I, I did not check this. Okay, thanks. That's a good point. Thank you, Gor. Okay, and uh, then next item is the schedule for the next interim meetings. Uh, we um, became aware that the proposed time uh, that was posted on the mailing list might be uh, in conflict with course uh, interims, at least have some overlapping. So we are suggesting if that is uh, going to work for everyone to move uh, the, our interims by half an hour. Uh, so that we can avoid uh, that overlap. Uh, that that work for everyone, or should I phrase it? Uh, are there any objections to this proposal? Uh, it appears that there are no objections. So when we schedule the next interims, we will. I scheduled them for half an hour later. And uh, with that, I think we can switch to the presentation uh, from John. Uh, so that's part of a presentation that was uh, started at the last idea. Uh, I don't remember exactly where you stopped, John. Joran uh, said it was, we should continue with page 13, if I remember correctly. Okay. 
so yeah, we have um, since the last meeting we have had we have been forced to spend our time on some other things. So there has not been extremely much uh, work being done on the CBOR certificate uh, uh, draft. Uh, so this is uh, continuous listing of the issues. I don't think we have any. so this is an the, the continued discussion on whether the CBOR certificate should be a CBOR sequence or a data item. And I don't think there has been very much more uh, more input when we discussed this last, Karsten commented that it was better to fix the tools than to fix the, uh, fix, change the draft. Uh, there's been some comments from Laurent that he thought uh, sequences were problematic with some tools. Uh, one thing where we need to make certificates or uh, certificate or chains of certificates and CBOR item is when we're using them in a tag. So that is already done. Then it's put into an array and the array is tagged. Um, um, but otherwise I don't have much more. I think this needs to continue to be an open, open, issue and I think it needs to be discussed quite high level concerning both a single certificate the certificate chain and when it's used in a file or in various transport or tagged and so on. But, I think Then we have next file format for saving CBOR certificate and CSRs. Uh, we have not had time to sp specify any CSR format. There is another draft that specifies a CSR format, but I think the previous discussion showed that that format was very not general enough and does not align with the CBOR certificate uh, draft or C509 certificate draft or whatever we will end up calling it. Uh, there was a suggestion to use a file format for saving this. I noticed that Michael Richardson has written such a draft. Uh, I don't understand the specific of this, but it seems uh, I assume we will use this draft written by Michael Richardson to store CBOR C509 certificates, but uh, I, I don't know exactly how it would be done, but Michael, uh, please. Um, so I think that, so we wound up with two versions. Uh, of it. One is that we prepend a CBOR sequence that's a basically probably 12 bytes unless you do it wrong. Um, and that has the advantage that um, you you can trivially remove those 12 bytes. You don't have to transmit them over the over the wire in your protocol so they don't have any overhead impact. Uh, the other way is that you put a tag on that or two tags if you prefer. Um, and and then you have the decision as to whether you are smart enough to remove that tag before you send it or whether you wind up using up bytes for the tag that you probably don't need because it's probably in a, I don't know, cozy uh, header or something that's already told you what it is. Um, so I reckon that's why I preferred the Seabor sequence mechanism because it means that when you put it on disk, it very clearly says what it is. Um, I think that uh, yes, we want we want a different tag for CSRs, and we probably if we have a private key format, which I think we might want to have, um, that um, we uh, we should tag that as well. Hmm. 
I concur with Mike. First one. Yeah. So concurring with Mike means we use um, the draft draft IETF Cbor file magic and the Cbor sequence option, and then we define different tags for for maybe a chain for a CSR and for a private key or something. Mike Richardson's uh, argument uh, about using sequence that is easily removable and uh, may and doesn't need to be transmitted over the air is very attractive to me. It, it makes a, a lot of sense for my use case and in general, which is why I support it. Would anybody be willing to make a pull request to the C509 draft. I'll do it. Great. Thanks, Michael. Um, then so issue 84 should a tag be defined this was raised by Lawrence and this has been added already to the to a recent version of the draft or recent submitted several months ago and the the tag use uh, the tag is for a chain so the draft now defines a specific tag that is a C509 chain. Uh, and the structure of this is QC C5. And this is the same structure that is suggested to be used uh, for the C5 bag and C5 chain, and also for the uh, C5U, which the, is the URI um, header parameter in in COSI. Uh, and the structure here is just a concatenation of the sequences of the individual certificates. And then all of that is wrapped in an array. And then that array is wrapped in a tag that identifies uh, uh, C509 chain. Uh, so the suggestion is to define a tag for a chain only, and that can then be used for a chain or for a individual certificate. Don't know if anybody has looked at that section of the draft or have any comments. Confess that I did not, but it seems useful to be able to uh, to store the the chain as opposed to just one third. Yeah, looking at the CDDL, CBOR certificate is a group that has a number of members and by by packing these members into an array, you would essentially have to count to, to 11 uh, <clears throat> and each group of 11 items is a certificate so maybe we can spend another array tag there mm -hmm. i mean people can count to 11 but that, that sounds a bit brittle if we ever change the number of uh, pieces that make up a, a CBOR certificate 
Ja. It's fine. Then we yes. let's change it to an. So then the serious thing is to change this to an array of arrays. Yes. Yeah. We'll do that. Uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, typically, I just if I don't have any comments, I just go for the the option with the least overhead. And then we can change it later. That's fine. We do that. Um, any other comments on this? Otherwise, can move on to slide sixteen. Uh, the, so slide 16, this issue is about CRL. Um, uh, and uh, we have not made, nobody has made any concrete suggestion for a more general C or CRL format aligning with the C509 draft. But uh, it is uh, we will definitely do that at some point in time i think there was agreement in the group that a crl general crl format aligning with this draft would be very useful um, there's also a comment that um, ocsp stapling would probably be relevant mm. And then I guess another issue not mentioned here is about certificate revocation lists. Um, and I think most of this was captured in the in the charter. Um, I don't know. It would. I think it would be good to have some priority list. What should we? What should be the first? Focus, because we are. I think everybody has limited time to do something, so we should make sure that we do the most useful thing first. Would that be? We are already doing certificate certificates. I assume the next prioritized things would be CRL, and then maybe OCSB, and fourth uh, instead of get revocation lists and it's not clear that we will or should do all of these john i think uh, csr is is high on the priority as well ah, okay yeah, okay this is this is just revocation this was, but i i thought this was about csr uh, yeah i'm sorry so the signing requests sort of the PKT. So I think that should be on the most that should definitely be number two after certificates. I I is my personal thinking. Yeah. Uh, but it would be good if somebody else has some other ID and it would be good to get comments here if if we should if we have time, what should we do first? Should we do certificate revocation list or should we just do o OCSP? And OCSP stapling. I, I think that OCSP has a higher priority than CRLs. Um, um, CSRs are interesting, and there's some discussion this week from Elliot about some desire to change the CSR attributes request. Um, and that's actually a place where what we have in the ASN1 is 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 disastrously bad even for ASN1 space where we made, this is a place where moving to a, a, a CBOR certificate kind of space may be more sense to just, just, we're not no longer compressing is what I'm saying, but doing something new because um, it looks pretty greenfieldish to me. I also don't think CSRs actually have a lot to compress. No, I, I think we just want to get some CBOR encoding of that and maybe align it 
as much as possible with the C509 draft, so you can reuse a lot of the code. Michael, could you provide a link to Elliot's uh, input, please? Yeah, I'll find the link, the ML archive, just a moment. Um, you know what? It's maybe a private conversation that's been told to go to LAMP, so maybe I can't uh, point to it. So um, I'll, I will point the COSI working group at it as soon as it becomes public. Thanks. Uh, yeah, seems so. Suggestion is that OCSP is CSR is probably the most urgent thing to specify, and OCSP is more important than CRL. Uh, by the way, the, the updated charter had a lot of changes by the ISD. For example, one the charter now opens up for certificates that are signed both over their encoding and CBOR encoding. I don't know if this has been discussed on the on the list in recently or not, but do the working group have any comments on this? Is this something that we should support that would be a Right now we have type zero and one, which one of them are signed over there and the other is signed over C board. This would be then another type which is signed over, provide signature over both. It seems useful to be able to sign C board, but uh, I'd like to get back to the previous point the relative importance of uh, OCSP versus CRL. I would say that they are equally important because uh, OCSP would definitely be the preferred way for online verification. While if you are in a disconnected subnet for whatever reason, then uh, CRL that you preloaded is your only way to validate and account for possible revocations. Wouldn't OCSP stapling would be an option? Um, but not in not this really... case. Not in this case. I'm explicitly talking about uh, disconnected when when you can reach back to a, uh, a a server then it doesn't matter you can reach back to crl server and you can reach back to ocsp server in, in which case ocsp is preferred but if you are disconnected then uh, since you cannot know f for sure in advance what certificates would be presented to you during your separation from the main network, you cannot uh, pre-request and preload OCSP responses. Stapling, I don't think, would do anything for you in this case. Only preloading a CRL would ensure that uh, while you would not have updates uh, from between uh, CRL issuing till now, you would still have updates from certificate issuing date to C CRL retrieval. This is my point. So to summarize your point, would that be that OCSP and CRL are equal?
equally prioritized? I would ask for that, yes, please. I think one, one practical uh, point here would be uh, what um, what goes into this the C509 draft and what goes into separate drafts and and maybe others are interested in contributing um, some of these topics. I just meant in the interest of of getting something published soon. No need to respond now. Just think about it. Yes, thank you, Colin, for this uh, point. Indeed, it's an interesting thing to consider. Um, yes, I don't have any preference or opinion on this right now. Yes, one one point could be that CSR is needed to deploy this at all. Or at least that was, I think, the comment from Lawrence. While maybe some deployments don't use revocation, even if they maybe should. Um, so you could deploy, deploy C509 and certificates without revocation or use some proprietary revocation mechanism, which is quite common in. For example, I think most browsers use some some partly proprietary revocation mechanisms. A, yeah, Pro, uh, pro, proprietary mechanisms do have a smell, and especially considering that uh, this is an ATF group. Could we please uh, stay with the official? I would like accept that methods, please, pretty please. Yeah, I'm not arguing that we should um, should uh, recommend proprietary mechanisms. I think I think the important I think all of these it would be good if Cbor encoding for all of this would be done. I think the important thing is to decide what what is most urgent. What should we spend? our time on the next year to try to specify and what can wait another year. But optimally, if people want to help, I think the optimal would be to specify all of these in Seaborn code. The conclusion seems to be that the group should long term specify both certificates CSR, OCSP, and CRL in CBOR encoding. This is what I hear as well.
Any other thoughts on this topic or should we move to the next slide? I, yeah, I don't think there are any, there are not any more detailed slides. This is just an overview about uh, the issues. So I don't know if, unless somebody has any questions or comments um, on the draft, I think this presentation is done. Okay, so are there any other comments or any other business that you would like to discuss? Ivalu, before you go away, I would like to ask you a few questions about Yang Zibo, which are not inside the material of this working group. Okay, uh, after we officially stop this meeting, we can right. uh, discuss it. Okay, so if not, thank you all for your participation and uh, see you in the next meeting. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.